Now, the next guy I wanted to talk about was a, another guy who I mentioned earlier collaborated with, you know, both Miss Oliver and Blossom and Train Lover 476. Now, his name kind of shares uh, a bit of similarity to Train Lovers, but um, this is a guy by the name of Train Boy 7, or nowadays he's called TB7 Productions. So, this guy, um, just like Miss Oliver and Blossom, he mostly used Bakuma models for his original series or as it was called back then, Thomas the Model Railway Engine. So, once again, there were Bakuma models used, and a few of the characters were made using Earl models. Um, however, some of these characters, like Stephanie and Oliver, they only appeared in, like, one episode. Sounds pretty familiar, doesn't it, Sharon Miller? Now, the funny thing about Train Boy 7 was that the first six episodes of Thomas the Model Railway Engine used paper faces to display character expressions. Trey Lover and Miss Oliver and Blossom did not do this, but Train Boy 7 here did. And it was honestly very interesting for, you know, a little while. Um, before starting in episode 7, he started using what I assume to be MS Paint or some other different software to display the expressions of the engines, just like, you know, the other two I mentioned previously. But, yeah, that was, um... Guess production-wise, that was how he made his videos. Oh, and also, once again, Windows Movie Maker. Now, this series, in my opinion, definitely had a lot more interesting, you know, character differences compared to the original series. Um, first off, Toby. Now, Toby, in the original Thomas the Battle Railway Engine series, um, had a lot of, had a much more, um, you know, redneck accent, like, Oh my gosh! And I guess people must have loved it so much that they requested Train Boy himself to do that same voice for Toby in some of their other shows. Like, you know, Miss Oliver Blossom and Train Lover 476, for an example. Now, for a while, Train Boy 7 was, you know, good friends with those two guys. Um, I honestly don't know what the relationship is like now. I don't know if they still contact one another. But I know Train Boy 7, the last time he collaborated with those three was in... Uh, a video done by Train Lover all the way back in 2016 about PC culture. Now, another thing that kept me watching this series was something he did that, like, I, uh, none of the other guys I've talked about previously have done, and that was have a character from another show have a crush and an interest on a character from Thomas and Friends. Now, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, um, in several episodes of Thomas About a Railway Engine, uh, Phoebe LeVue, that's right, the purple skunk chick from Tiny Toon Adventures. She went after James in several episodes. I also don't know why her out of all characters, but, um, yeah, it was definitely interesting. It, it was especially noticeable in episode 9. What's even funnier, at one point, Train Boy 7's logo was basically a silhouette of James and a silhouette of Fifi LeFew. Uh, I'm assuming it's because of, you know, their, th those characters' um, relationship in uh, Thomas about Railway Engine. And probably because, I'm going to assume, correct me if I'm wrong, Train Boy 7 if you're watching this video, which I highly doubt it. But, I'm assuming James was probably his favorite um, engine, which is probably why James appeared in so many episodes of Thomas about Railway Engine. And I'm guessing Fifi LaFume was one of his favorite characters. Like, in general, I don't know, but, um, that could be a reason. Just a bit of an assumption. Don't take everything I say as fact, except a lot of things on this show. <laughs> However, unlike, um, Miss Oliver and Blossom and Train Lover 476, who both moved away from the Thomas community and into the Brony community, that didn't happen with Train Boy 7. He's still kind of active in the Thomas community. While he doesn't make any of the Thomas videos that he was known for making a decade ago with his Bachman models, he does still make occasional Thomas content, whether it be YouTube poops or stuff from one of the 3D uh, Thomas simulators, wh whatever they're called. I don't know the names of them. I'm so sorry. But, yeah, he's still pretty active in the community. Um, kind of glad to see it, too. Um, despite the fact that he doesn't make the kind of videos that, you know, I remember him for, but that's okay. Glad to see he's still pretty active in the Thomas community, despite that. Now, the next guy I wanted to talk about is 
a guy by the name of Flamingo Six One Nine. Now, his original channel I don't think is uh, no longer around because of a certain situation that happened to him years later, which I will get into at the very end. But yeah, I, I don't think I have like I don't think there's like any videos or any photographs from like any of his older videos. So if if I don't have any like photos or screenshots from his redubs, then I do apologize. But yeah, that was the one thing Flamingo Six One Nine was known for doing in the Thomas community: comedic redubs based on actual Thomas episodes. And yeah, just like with Train Lover and Miss Oliver and Blossom, uh, you know, same kind of cast. Um, of course, Train Lover, Miss Oliver and Blossom appeared in many episodes of his redub series, and it was to the point where like Flamingo was considered like you know on par with like you know Miss Oliver and Train Lover as like you know. Popular, I guess you can kind of say. Um, eventually, those three would become sort of the holy trinity of the Thomas community when it came to comedy videos. However, uh, eventually, all three of them, you know, moved away from the Thomas community and into, you guessed it, the Brony community. Now, Toon Critic, um, yeah, Toon Critic was his later name after Flamingo 619. He eventually dropped that name later on. But yeah, um, he later became Toon Critic, and from his name, you know, he reviewed uh, cartoon shows, something that, you know, none of the other guys did. Although Miss Oliver Blossom did do a couple reviews of Thomas um, Series 16, but yeah, uh, Toon Critic mostly reviewed, like, almost anything from, like, you know, cartoons. And for a while, Toon Critic was quite a popular figure in the Brody community. He is collaborated with other YouTubers who have done, like, you know, videos related to My Little Pony. And, yeah, he kept doing it for a while, up until early 2018, with this, um, situation. Now, for about a year, Toon Critic was chatting with somebody from Skype, I assume, and it was apparently revealed to be a 14-year-old girl, and he would have, he would have had sexual role plays with her. And actually, at one point, showed um, a picture of his um, crotch area to her. Now, now, now don't worry. He um, he had boxers on, but like, that was like, that was pretty messed up. And yeah, people eventually found out about it. And yeah, that pretty much ruined his entire internet career. And he lost basically all of his friends because of that situation. So. Yeah, kind of sad to see a guy who made Thomas dub, fan dub videos, um, or whatever, redubs, sorry, I don't know what I was thinking, but it's sad to see a guy who made Thomas redubs go to eventually become a pedophile. Really sickening and very sad. Alright, now, um, let's see, um, if we can talk about something that's a little bit less disturbing. Ah, here we go, let's talk about... Twisted Tom? Uh, now, Twisted Tom is another interesting individual. Now, don't worry, he didn't become a pedophile just like Toon Critic, but, um, his content is interesting. He makes, you know, Thomas adult comedy videos. Now, unlike, you know, a lot of the other guys I've talked about who have done Family Guy jokes in their videos, um, a lot of this guy's humor is sort of slightly based on Adult Swim shows like Aqua Teen Hunger Force, The Venture Brothers, Rick and Morty, Robot Chicken, the list goes on. And yeah, it was definitely, you know, pretty interesting to watch. And uh, yeah, if you guys aren't a fan of adult humor, I would not recommend watching Twisted Tom's videos. Now, unfortunately, Twisted Tom himself doesn't really have a YouTube channel up. Heck, I don't even know if this guy's even still active on the internet in general. But I know his videos, last time I checked was on the Busted Buffers YouTube channel, but been a while since I've checked. Hold on, give me a second. And would you look at that, I was right. Busted Buffers actually still has Twisted Tom's videos on there. So yeah, definitely uh, take a look around Busted Buffers' YouTube channel for Twisted Tom videos. Um, I think people have made, like, you know, playlists of Twisted Tom videos, but um, yeah, definitely give the videos a check yourself if you're a fan of adult humor like I am. Now, the last guy I wanted to talk about for this episode, 
and very ironically, um, while everybody else I've talked about was pretty much from the US or elsewhere besides the UK, uh, Diesel D199, the next guy I'm going to be talking about, is actually from Australia. So, yeah, this guy, um, he's still pretty active in the Thomas community, just like Trainboy7. Um, he was most well known for his Tomica Thomas and Friends series. And, yeah, during the first um, 38 shorts, um, these were made using the Tommy models, just like Tommy Thomas and Friends done by Trail Number 476. And, of course, um, just like, you know, so a lot of the other people I've talked about, they have used a lot of more mature jokes for a little while. Now, that did change a little bit when he eventually switched over to CGI. I'm not kidding with you. This guy's, some of this guy's newer videos have actually been done with actual CGI, and they look pretty good. Very good, actually. Some of the best Thomas videos out there nowadays on YouTube, although nowadays... His videos are probably set as made for kids, but hopefully not. But anyways, but yeah, um, the thing about Tom Tomica Thomas and Friends, I might as well talk about some of the character changes. Now, he actually did make um, Percy um, gay, which was, you know, honestly kind of interesting. And, you know, yeah, um, it was to the point where, like, Thomas actually told everybody on the island and eventually caught Edward's attention. Now, Edward in Topic of Thomas and Friends was essentially the Herbert of the show. Uh, Herbert the Pervert from Family Guy. So he sort of acted like him. He kind of had a similar voice. Uh, he sort of preyed on tank engines, very similar to how Herbert preyed on children. But yeah, those are some of the different um, characteristics of Tomica compared to the actual Thomas and Friends show. Now, when it came to the CGI shorts that have been done by um, Diesel D199, a lot of the more mature jokes have been sort of dropped. Um, and now a lot of the jokes that you hear nowadays in Tomica Thomas and Friends are basically just self-aware humor. Like, for example, in the 10th anniversary video that he did, uh, in the intro, James was like, Ah, what a wonderful day on Sodor. Oh, no, 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 wait. It was, ah, what a wonderful day to be in CGI. I've never been, felt this clean since I was a dirty plastic toy. Yeah, that was... That's definitely your example of um, what his humor is kind of like nowadays. So that was pretty much every Thomas YouTuber that I wanted to talk about for this episode. And I know there have been several other Thomas YouTubers I didn't mention in this video, like... Um, Sidekick Jason, James A. Williams, and Dalek44. I mean, I've already done, like, what, four episodes of the Cave from England talking about Dalek44, so... Yeah, um, I've already talked about him enough, and you guys already know what his content is like. Um, as for James A. Williams, uh, I've never really, you know, watched any of his Thomas content. However, um, I might be doing an episode of the Cave from England at some point, um, doing a commentary on one of his videos... And if you guys know James A. Williams and his one of his more well-known reviews, you guys probably know which video I'm going to be covering. But anyways, um, that's all I pretty much wanted to talk about for, you know, Thomas YouTubers. Um, yeah, definitely quite a nostalgia trip. Um, definitely, you know, still cherish a lot of these guys dearly. Besides Fl Flame Amigo with uh, what happened to him later on. But... That is going to be about it for this um, episode of A Cave from England. If you liked this episode, feel free to give it a like. Hit subscribe if you want to see more episodes of A Cave from England and just mediocre plush content in general. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you think. That is about it. This is Tyler from the Character Workshop, signing out. And next time... What am I going to talk about next time? I'm going to have to look at my book again. Uh Oh, I know. Next thing I'm going to be talking about is... Thank <laughs> you.